Hello, welcome to my lecture series in physics. Uh, my videos are going to be heavily based on CIE levels. So let's get started. The first chapter in physics is measurement. So this is fairly easy chapter. However, uh, let's start with, with the easiest first. So in this chapter, we're going to cover these topics. Okay, uh, so let's start with physical quantities. So physical quantities are those which can be measured weights can be measured for example length time temperature maybe speed and so on and every physical quantity uh, consists of a value and a unit a unit is basically what gives meaning to the value of the physical quantity the value is sometimes also called magnitude so physical quantities can be broadly classified into two groups uh, one is base quantity and the another one is derived quantity derived quantity these quantities are sometimes called fundamental quantities fundamental quantities okay <clears throat> so base quantities are those which are independent so there are seven base quantities in physics and all the other quantities are derived from these base quantities so I think there are quantities is like is very clear from its name uh, Base quantities, so seven base quantities, maybe you know them, maybe you don't. Let's write them out. Mass, uh, the unit <coughs> of mass is kilogram. Uh, length, length is meter, time seconds, temperature, Kelvin, not degree Kelvin, only Kelvin. Current ampere amount of substance mole luminous intensity candela CD for cell phone. So these are the base units. So these are the base quantities and these are base units or fundamental units. Base units. So mass the base units of mass can be kilogram or it can be gram or it can be pounds, right? So all of these are base units of mass. But so there are lots of system of measuring mass, right? In order to make an universal system of measurement, the scientists have chosen a certain measurement called the SI unit. SI unit or SI system. And the SI unit of mass is kilogram. The SI unit of length is meter. The SI unit of time is seconds. The SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. The SI unit of current is ampere. And yeah, so there, there can be other units of length as well, right? Meter and then what else? Food, right? Food, one foot, two feet, and there are lots of other units, right? All of these are base units, and these are SI base units. So these seven units, these are SI base units. So there are seven SI base units. So let's move on to derived quantity. Derived quantities are those which are derived, basically derived from base quantities. For example, speed. So speed is basically distance travel, distance travel over time taken. So distance travel is basically length, right? Length over time. So we covered uh, physical quantities. We covered SI units. And before we move on to applications of SI base units, let's convert derived units, derived units to SI base units okay let's see so let's think about the unit of force which is newton right the unit of force is newton so i need to find out what are the si base units of newton so let's see so force is basically mass times acceleration right and acceleration is basically change in velocity over time taken Let's, let's see the units of these quantities. Mass has unit uh, kilogram, 
change in velocity is meters per second and time has SI base unit seconds so so the SI base units of force becomes kilogram meters per second squared basically uh, in this way you can convert uh, all the derived units to SI base units so in examination in paper one they might ask you to do that what you need to do is just uh, figure out the formula formula like this and then yeah simplify as much as you can and yeah when you when you're in a point that you can write the units then write those units and you can get your answer so we will talk we're going to talk about the applications of SI base units so let's see one major application of SI base unit is to check to check the homogeneity homogeneity of physical equations or basic equations so what does this mean so let's think about what homogeneity means homogeneity means that both sides of the equations should have the same units for example i can only write five apples equals five apples right i cannot write five apples equals five oranges right it makes no sense this is incorrect and also i can write five apples equals two apples plus three apples but i cannot write five apples equals two apples plus three oranges it does not make sense i cannot add apples and oranges so this equation so this is an equation is homogeneous but this equation here is not homogeneous so let's let's see an example in physics so let's say uh, one of the popular equation s equals ut plus half ad squared so let's see if this equation is homogeneous so in the left hand side in its left hand side in it is is only meter so the unit of piston is meter right there's a plus operation so this term and this term they must have uh, the same unit meters so let's see in RHS first term is ut right ut in its units so u stands for velocity right initial velocity so velocity has unit meters per second and time has unit second so if you remember your from your algebra class what you can do is the second has power one so minus one plus one is zero so which is basically meters to second zero anything that has power zero is one so it is a meter right so you can see that the first term has unit meter and the second term is half a d squared its units the numbers they don't have units acceleration is meters per second square right so here you can see that time is squared so the unit of time is second since time is squared is basically t dot t so it is second dot second or second squared right so it could it would be meters sorry meters per second zero which would give me meter so you can see that this equation is homogeneous therefore homogeneous so homo checking homogeneity is a very uh, important application in physics because whenever we come up with new equation we have to check if the equation is homogeneous and all the equations that are correct in physics are homogeneous if they are not homogeneous uh, the equations are never correct now let's move on to uh, let's move further so multiples and sub multiples sub multiples well mass of a proton is basically maybe something like 0 0.0000000 some kind of zeros and then maybe 166 right so it could be very small number so in order to represent these numbers if you try to write write it like this we may make mistakes there could be errors 
and yeah it will be very hideous so we have multiples and submultiples so let's let's talk about multiples so multiples so 10 to the power 3 is kilo right kilo so 1 kilogram equals 10 to the power 3 gram which is basically 1000 gram right and then 10 to the power 6 is mega capital M these are symbols 10 to the power 9 is giga capital Z 10 to the power 12 is tera capital T 10 to the power 15 is beta capital T and some multiples some multiples 10 to the power minus 3 oh that's a good one minus 2 10 to the power minus 2 is centi uh, small c for for symbol for example one centimeter is 10 to the power minus 2 meter right so this, these are the sub multiples of si base units multiples of si base units 10 to the power minus 3 is milli one millimeter is 10 to the power minus 3 meter 10 to the power minus 6 is micro that's symbol this and you pronounce is you can pronounce it by saying mu. 10 to the power minus 9 is nano, small n. 10 to the power minus 12 is pico, small p. So these are the multiples and some multiples. So if, if somebody says one nanosecond, they basically mean they basically mean 10 to the power minus 9 second. It's a very very small fraction of time. <coughs> so now. I want to focus on one area, converting, converting areas and volumes. So many students have problems of converting areas and volumes. So let's see what I mean. For example, uh, let's see once we have to convert one centimeter cube to meter cube. So many students are tempted to write that one cm cube would be since one cm is basically ten to the minus two meter. They attempt to write 10 to the power minus 2 meter cube, which is absolutely incorrect. So, what do we need to, what we need to do is think about this. So, we know the relation, we know this relation, right? 1 cm equals 10 to the power minus 2 meter. Now, we have to find cm cube. So, what I do, what I do is cube both sides, right? So, 1 cube is 1 cm cube. And if you remember your algebra class, so if the if a b to the power n it is a to the power n dot b to the power n, so 10 to the power minus 2 meters to the power 3 is basically minus 2 times 3, which would give me 10 to the power minus 6 and it's meter cube. So you can see that one centimeter cube is not 10 to the power minus 2 meter cube but 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube. So you have to think about these things. So yeah, this much for today. Uh, we'll continue our chapter tomorrow, and after the end of the chapter, I will help you solve some questions. Thank you.